Hey DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today we're going to be going over how to learn in a PowerG key fob, which is the PG9929, into our IQ2 Plus. Now the IQ2 Plus does come with a PowerG daughter, bar, daughter board card built in. All the IQ2 Plus panels come with the PowerG daughter board card built in. So if you guys are planning on using this PG9929, which is a key fob, you need to make sure that you have the IQ2 Plus or at least your a Power G daughter board, daughter board card built into your system. All right. So this Power G key fob is meant to transmit at two kilometers. That's line of sight. Yeah. So um, obviously, if it's going to construction or through buildings, different materials can cause or can cause different um, a different decrease in the range. So just something to keep in mind of when you guys are programming this in. Um, and uh, this also comes with 128 bit AES encryption yeah so if you guys are worried about hackers or anything this sensor will basically it's foolproof yeah spam proof let's say all right so let's go ahead and open it up so as soon as I open it up I'm actually seeing here that since it is a key fob a lot of people usually put these on their little key ring so it has a, a little ring attached at the bottom um, some other people may just want to put this by their nightstand so they can arm the system from their actual, you know, from their actual bed. And there's also a little panic button here. So you have the arm away at the very top. The arm stay in the mid, in the uh, the second one down. The disarm, third one down. And the little star is usually set to a panic. It could be either a, uh, for this one, it's either going to be a medical or a police panic. All right. So first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is put the system in an auto learning uh, state. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button at the very top. You can either hit it or swipe down. I'm going to hit settings. I'm going to go to advanced settings. Enter in your dealer or installer code. Mine right now is defaulted at 1111 or 2222. So I can use either of the codes because right now mines are defaulted. Yours may be different if you or your monitoring company have changed it. Once I'm in the this screen here, you'll know if you went to the right if you enter the right code because it'll you'll see installation in the top left. You're gonna hit installation. You're gonna use devices, security sensors, and auto learn sensor. Once you hit auto learn, auto learn sensor, the panel goes into a learning mode. Now to learn this device in, you do have to press and hold the little star key at the bottom. Now when you press and hold it, the light's gonna blink one time but you have to keep holding it until you see the second blink. All right, so I'm gonna press and hold it. I see the first blink. I keep holding and then I release on the second one. The second one should have came up by now. Let me try this one more time. Again, if it doesn't work for you guys the first time, just do it again. So press and hold. blinks one time and second time is a yellow blink and it learns into the panel so what I noticed was the first blink was red the yet the second one was a yellow and it was a steady and then it started fast blinking and then the panel actually lets you know the sensor 306 3115 is requesting to be added to your list do you want to continue you hit OK now this number here if you want you can actually match it up with the number that's on the back of the sticker of the key fob. So if you look at the back, right in the middle of that sticker, there's an ID number. That's the ID for the sensor. And that number is actually on the very first line as well, 306-3115. If you check your key fob, 306-3115, you'll see that it actually shows the same serial number on the key fob on there. This comes useful if you guys are learning in multiple sensors and you guys just happen to walk by a motion that hasn't been learned in yet and that's powered on the motion may end up going into here. So you want to make sure that you match up the correct one so you know what you're programming. All right. Now, the sensor type will automatically go to key fob because that's what we're working with here. The sensor group, this has to do with the, uh, with the panic. So it only lets you do a mobile intrusion or a mobile auxiliary or fixed auxiliary. Mobile intrusion means that mobile means you're wearing it with you. It's a mobile device you're you know it leaves the premise it comes back to the premise so 
mobile in the intrusion is the police. So this is actually a loud police panic. There is no silent panic for this one. There's a mobile auxiliary, so that's a medical panic, and a fixed auxiliary. This is if you have it in a fixed location, on, on your desk, underneath a desk, on your nightstand, and you guys want to set off a medical panic, you can do that as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do mixed intrusion, well, sorry, <laughs> mobile intrusion for now. And for the sensor name, again, you can play with whatever you want. You can add a custom description. I'm just going to leave mine as key fob. For the chime, you can give it a chime as well. Voice prompt, you can leave it on. And for the source, we are dealing with a power G sensor, so you need to leave it as power G. You hit add new. Sensor added successfully. You hit the little home button to go back to the main screen. And now the system shows disarmed and the key fob is ready to use. So now whenever you're pressing one of these buttons, if you just press it one time and release right away, it's not going to work. You actually have to hold the button down. So I'm gonna do an arm away. I'm gonna do it one more time here. An arm away. Key fob arm away. It starts blinking red and I'm get the light actually turned green when the command was sent. All right. And then I'm going to do a disarm, which is the third one down. It shows the little unlock pad. Again, the green light is to confirm that the command went through. You can do an arm stay. And you can do another disarm. And if I want to set off a panic, same thing. Just hold the button down. It's going to get loud. I use my master code to disarm that, so make sure whatever code you guys use is one of the codes that's programmed to your panel, right? So I use my master code, which is 1234. Yours is obviously going to be different if you or your company has changed it. And you want to make sure you change the master code. That's going to be the main code to disarm the system, yeah? Um, let me show you guys real quick what the um, fixed intrusion, or, or I'm sorry, fixed auxiliary or mobile auxiliary, auxiliary sounds like. So hit the little button at the very top. Go to settings, advanced. I'm going to enter in 1111. Again, yours might be different. Go to installation, devices, security sensors. I'm going to go to edit sensor this time because it's already a sensor that exists in the panel. I hit the little pencil icon to the right. And I'm going to set it as mobile auxiliary, fixed auxiliary. They're the same thing, except remember mobile is if you're wearing it on you, on the lanyard, on your key, anything like that. Fixed is if you have it in a fixed location, right? It doesn't move from that location. So let's just do mobile auxiliary or fixed auxiliary, okay? Hit save. Go back home. Now, you're going to see that the fixed auxiliary, it's not a constant blaring. It actually sounds, stops. It sounds, and it stops. Watch. You can silence it if you're going to enter in your code. You can silence the siren, but you have to make sure you enter in your code after to disarm the system. All right. So that is just a quick video on how to program in the PowerG PG9929 key fob into the IQ2+. Plus. If you guys do have any other questions at all, feel free to email us at support at alarmgear.com. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure that you uh, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and enable the notification so whenever we upload new content, you guys are notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.